rigging up, just rigging up that uh, that sliding snell, the double hook there. So silver wiring, pilchards, both pretty much the same, except the pilchards a little bit softer. So you do it the exact same way. So we turn the fish this way. I'm looking for the meaty side. You have got the lateral line through here, about halfway down the bait in through this side, make sure you miss the backbone, pull it right the way through the fish. In the side that the lines come out, you're going to push that through, halfway through to the fish, through, out through the gill plate, and then tuck that down. Pull that tight, come for our second hook now, we want this one out on the other side of the bait. So two thirds into that lateral line, out through the fish. A couple of half hitches over the tail to hold it all in place. Like so. And there you have it. There you see silver whiting. Plenty of hook exposure there. One near the head, one two thirds of the way up. Great bait. That's the perfect rig right there for catching your snapper. Not going to do any better than that. Okay, so we've still got the sliding snell here and we're just going to hook it up to the uh, pilchard. Once again, the meaty side of the lateral line about halfway through. Pull it right the way through the fish. This pilchard's a little bit soft. It's going to be my burly. In through the fish, out through the gill plate or the eye. Tighten that up. Get your other hook ready for the other side of the fish. Two thirds of the way down. In and out. Then a couple of half hitches over the tail again. That's it, there's your pilchard, double hook set up, already plenty of hook exposure, both sides of the fish are covered, another great bait. Okay, so the last one we've got here is that sliding one again, and this is just for your California squid or your fresh squid preferably, in through the middle there, try and hit that little cartilage that's in the middle through there I want to hit it is the bottom of the hood so that holds it in place and then come out through the middle of the eyes and that's it there and then the second hook all we're going to do with that one is on the other side is to pin the pin the hood at the top like so so that's your bait there, plenty of exposure on the top, flip it over the other sides, coming out through there. Great little bait, leave the tentacles dangling, give them something to sort of wave around in the tide, and that's an awesome snapper bait. Okay, so now we've got the uh, double snelled hook which is fixed, this one doesn't slide. So we'll go with the pilchard first. I prefer not to go through the middle of the bait like you do with a sliding one because it's already fixed in place and it's a bit harder to get it right on the exact point. So straight in, out through the gill, gill plate. It's a bit soft, this pilchard. Flip that around, other side through the bait, out the other side. So, and a couple of half hitches around the end of the tail again. Sometimes I don't mind just hooking it over the edge of the hook as well, where the eye is, just to give it a bit more stability. There you go, there you've got your pilchard all set up. Hook exposure both sides already. Just remember when you're using your pilchards, you're going to need to check your bait a bit more often as the, uh, the flathead don't mind ripping the guts out and then taking them. So, all right, we'll just do the same now with the silver whiting. Oh, 
always make sure you've got no scales on the ends of your hooks too. Alright, so we're going through the middle of the fish, just the meaty side of the lateral line. I'll try this way this time. In through here, out through the gill plate. Tuck that down, pull it up tight. And then your second hook. Deep. Out through the fish. Pull that down. Pull that down tight. A couple of half hitches around the tail again. Just grab the hook as well to keep it straight. And there's your bait. Good exposure. Both sides of the bait, good hooks, well presented. That's how you want to see your bait. GoPro, stop recording. Alright, so just the single hook now, we've talked a bit about that, using half a pilly or half a um, silver whiting, very effective especially earlier on in the season. Um, I find that early on in the season, the snapper don't seem to just want to take the whole bait. So early season, go for half a pilchard or half a silver whiting. In through the meaty side again, this side of the lateral line. Pull it right the way through. In the fish, out the gill plate. It's as simple as that. Plenty of exposure. Don't worry about tucking her in. Have it hanging like that. Hook right out and you'll get a good hook up every time. Just show you another way. Some people like to use this. I haven't as been as successful. But if you come through the fish and you can also bring it on the top and out through the middle of the eyes basically. Goes out through the, the skull so you get a really firm um, position for your hook but I've tried it numerous times and I don't seem to get as many hookups with the hook there as I do out the side of the head so it's something different you can try it out see how you go it's just another way of putting the hook out for your half a silver whiting okay so there's our little snapper snatcher bead on there and always good to put a little bit of bait on there so that last rig that I showed you a little bit of a squid head out through the middle of the eyes just leave that dangling like that there plenty of exposure bit of flash bit of color always going to get something enticed to that also if you're going to be using your pilchards or um, piece of just as we said before the snapper seemed to like the heads so that there can become your burly and basically just the ones hook right the way through push that up against there and just leave plenty of exposure and that's all you need to do for your snapper snatches okay so in the last video I was talking about two different types of hooks a uh, circle hook there and the J hooks I've sort of been steering away from the circle hooks a bit I don't get as many hookups um, as I do with the J hooks with the circle hooks you can't strike at the bait you can't strike at the fish you've got to just let the rod load up you can't have it in your hand leave it in the snapper rack and just let it load up and make sure that the hook's on that's the only way to use these with the J hook you have got some opportunity there to actually strike at the fish and hook the fish but saying that they also load up just the same as the circle hooks do circle hooks for me should only really be used on a strip bait i use them an 80 strip bait strip of um strain salmon or uh, coal fish or whatever i can get for gummy shark and it's just basically you strip and you whack it through the end there 
and that's it. That's your bait. That's what I use for gummy, but it'll be Australian salmon. That's the only way I like to use the circle hooks uh, for a strip bait, and that's it. Everything else, I'm using the J hooks. All of those ones that I've shown you today have all been with the J hooks. All right, and those are the, they are the BKKs um, that I talked about in my last video. Fantastic hook, really, really strong, really, really sharp. Um, very, very happy with those. Good strike rate, good, good hit up rate on those, definitely a really good hook. G'day everyone, it's uh, Rob the Axeman here from Axeman's Family Fishing and Adventures. And what we're working on today is part two of preparing for snapper season. So the first part one was all about the rigs. Now today I'm gonna to show you the, um, the way to use your baits, um, how to rig them up and prepare them properly on those rigs that we did. But also we're gonna be doing this uh, section on burley. Now, Western Port Bay, top burley, waste of time. You throw it in up at Turidan, it's going to be at Phillip Island before it gets anywhere near the bottom. But if you use a cage and take it down to the bottom, it can be very effective as well. I'll show you a couple of other little tips. Um, the things that you're going to need today, you're going to need some pellets. Now, it can be in this form or the big snapper pellets, which are a bit, bit chunkier. Um, I don't mind these ones. These ones are flavoured with a bit of aniseed, which I think is always good. So you're going to need some of that. You're going to need some tuna oil or fish oil, something like those to get it going. Uh, mix it all up together. If you've got some old bread or rolls, things like that, always good to throw in there. Breaks up nicely, soaks up the tuna oil as well. And of course we need some old bait. Um, this was the stuff that I was using the other day in relation to showing you the the baiting up so some pilchards are always the best because they're very very oily um, puts out a good scent into the water I'll use a few um, silver whiting and things sometimes you've had bait that you've taken out two or three times you've refrozen it it's no use trying to use that again it goes all soft when it goes onto the hook and defrost so that's the best stuff to start burling up making a good burly mix all right I'll um, show you what I've got and how we do it and uh, here we go all right, so as you can see, I've got the um, old style mincer here. Picked it up for about 10 bucks down the local market. Great, chuck it in your old pilchards, usually head first. And you'll see it comes out in a nice little minced, minced up action like that. That's gonna be the basis of your burling. So that's up the, you've got your pilchards, you can see a bit of, I don't think the, uh, the squid doesn't go through so well, so I wouldn't worry about those, but your silver whiting, pilchards, pilchards obviously the best. All going to be good burly. All right, the next stage. Okay, so once you've got your, your minced up, pilchards and silver whiting, whatever bait you want to throw in there. I like to throw a few bigger chunks in like we would as if we were burling from the top as well because this smaller stuff is going to go through the finer holes in your burly pots where these chunks will hang around for a bit longer. Cut all that up. Now, you're going to need a bucket. I didn't say that before. What we're going to do, scrape all that into there. We're going to add our pellets. I'm only just making a small log to start with, and I'll show you why in a second. Spray pellets. Oil. Some 
thread into that. Big pieces, small pieces. All those in the mix. Spoon, give it a stir, making sure all the pellets and the bread have got some of the, um, see in there, everything gets mixed up in nice. Beautiful. Alright, so we've got a good mixture in there now. If you're Burley, Port Phillip Bay, and you're chasing snapper, you need one of these. Alright, it's a bit of a, a Burley, they call it the secret weapon Burley bomb. Um, since I've been using this, I've had a lot more success. Weighted end, you put your Burley in here, okay, close it up, take it down to the bottom. I've just got mine on an old hand line with some heavy, heavy line. 40, 50 pound line on that. It goes down to the bottom, it hits the bottom, you pull it up, the water sucks into that, and it dumps it right at the bottom where you need your burley. You know, it's okay to be thrown in the top, but you probably uh, your burley's probably going to be helping the guy that's 100 metres further down sitting in your burley trail. This takes it straight to the bottom underneath the boat where you want your burley and where you want the fish to be. So if you haven't got one, I suggest if you want to get serious about catching snapper, this is what you need. Alright, now, while I was telling you that, I said that we only made a small amount. One of the ways I make a little burly thing for this to fit in, this paper, uh, paper roll, you know, your hand bite paper roll type of stuff. Keep those, split up the guts, put a bit of... Um, glad wrap in the middle then you can spoon your mixture into the gap in the middle push it down Burly in there Not going all over your hands and what the the roll does is keep the shape that you want to fit into your secret weapon. So I've got enough in there now, as you can see, it's all filled up. So basically, just to keep that shape. Slide it out through the end. Wrap it all up. Like that. And that's going to fit nicely inside my we're coaxing. That's going to fit nicely inside my uh, secret weapon. What I like to do, why I'm showing you this, is I put that now in the freezer. I'll freeze one up. So the first one that I stick down is frozen, and it melts in the water and slowly releases. That way I've got all my rods in the right place. I stick that down first and it's slowly releasing into the water. Best way to do it. And then the rest of the day while I'm burling, I'm just putting pieces in, I'm putting pellets in, or I'm mixing a bucket in the, in the boat and I'm loading this up and chucking it back down. All right, throughout the day or if I change spots. But the frozen one, best way to go. Don't forget that one, all right? So we've got that. Make up a larger frozen one as well. I'll get one of my old rag, uh, sorry, old roll bags. I'll stick it in an old two-liter Coke can, sorry, Coke bottle, and I do the same thing. Now this is for my burly pot on the back of my boat, the one that's fixed to the boat. This also gets frozen. And the first one that I like to use, obviously, is this one at the start of the day. Stick that in the back, let it melt in the water, and then slowly release. And then throughout the day, I'll mix up more of this and put it in there. Alright, so same, same thing. Once that's full right up, twist it off, 
pull it out, stick it in the freezer, let it freeze, and then you've got one of those to stick in. Burling on the top of the water is pretty important when it comes to Port Phillip Bay. Um, cutting up your pilchards into nice chunks throughout the day and just tossing them in, just, you know, a couple of centimetre chunks like that. That's what you want to be throwing a handful of those in, you know, every 10, 15 minutes, something like that. If you catch fish and you've hooked on, get your mate in the boat or your son, your daughter, whoever's fishing with you, to start throwing some cubes in, all right? Snapper or school fish, if you want to catch your, you know, your limit and bag out, get those cubes in the water while someone's hooked up and we'll keep the other fish around and hopefully your other rods will go off too. All right. Just remember, burley is pretty big important aspect of fishing for snapper, especially in Port Phillip Bay. Probably not as much in Western Port unless you're using uh, one of those stainless steel um, burley buckets and it's weighted and you can get it down there. Um, but you wouldn't want to run it in a heavy current or something along that. That's the only problem with Western Port is the, uh, the strength of the tides. All right, so this comes to the conclusion of a, another video. Um, I did get out on the water yesterday in Western Port um, with a mate. It was rough as guts, and I have got another video coming up shortly in relation to how we went on that day. All right, guys, stay safe out there on the water, and we'll see you out there soon. Oh, Chuck a Khan! Oh, yuck! There's Burley!